guys want to welcome you back to the channel. It has been a while since we had the White Freightliner cab over on the channel. And a lot has been done to it since the last video. If you guys caught the very end of the trailer video that I made for the cab over. If you caught that, the cab over had got painted. But I have put none of that uh, on the channel. So today's video is going to be... Uh, an update of everything that's been done to the cab over so far uh, all the stuff that's been installed on it because we're almost to the very end of it and uh, I also have a little bit of an update of the progress of the table and uh, also what is really amazing on this video is we're gonna have a sneak peek of the build that is coming on the channel of the venomous prowler that's something that i've been working on behind the scenes and that is going to be our next build uh, i was going to do the jet truck which i may still go ahead and uh, start working on that but i had a chance to get a couple of vehicles the plymouth prowler and uh, the dodge viper gts coupe and so i have that and i've done a mock-up of some of the parts and, and let me tell you, it is complicated. I can see why no one has ever, scale-wise or one-on-one version, why no one has ever put a Dodge Viper V10 into a Plymouth Prowler, because it ain't easy. All right, so let's hit that intro and let's get to work. So starting with the Freightliner update, you can see that I did get it painted. This color right here, this gloss ocean mist. And I wanted that color because it kind of looks to me like it's antique. Like it's a color from back in the 60s or something. So I decided I wanted to paint it something that made it look old, nostalgic. When I get the rat rod painted, it will be uh, the same color as the truck. So they'll be matching colors. And um, you can see a mix of like a bronze color and chrome and black. And that's all the colors of the truck. Uh, the engine has its own colors, but that's because I was trying to make it look like a Caterpillar engine, which you can see in previous videos, uh, how I detailed it. As you can see here, I put just one tank on it. Um, I still need to look, do a little touch up on the tank. Um, but I decided just to have him one tank on it. Uh, I haven't done any detail on the wheels. Uh, I did start to put some of the small pieces on the truck as far as like the uh, grab handles and the door handles, stuff like that. Um, I started to put the air horns and the lights up here, uh, which you see I got a couple more to put on. And um, I haven't done any black wash on the grill yet. I haven't put the headlights in, but I do have the bezels for them to fit. I love how low this truck sits. It looks really nice. I'm uh, really proud of how low it sits. And uh, it, we'll turn it over and show you... Uh, how that ended up happening there. But um, you see on this side, I uh, haven't got the the mirror holder in yet, which this one has the mirror holder. And it's on pretty good. But this one, I was doing some work to it and actually made it come off. But what I've decided to do is um, make a little indention with my small drill bit and then uh, glue it into those tiny little holes that I make so that the uh, mirror bracket will stay on better but you can see in here that I got the interior installed that I had uh, I was painting uh, the last go around of the video and then uh, you can see uh, how the exhaust and the uh, air separator all uh, fits in back here nicely 
and then I uh, hadn't done any detail to the back just yet but you can see I did get the wood grain um, bed put in I thought it looked really nice there and um, I still need to put a hitch on the back of it I still need to uh, do all the work on the trailer the trailer is still flat black I haven't done any work on it in a very long time so when I go to do the detailed work on this I will include the trailer and then it'll be a one and done video um, to show you what I did with that but uh, the bed does still tilt um, you can see back here that I got the two air tanks put in uh, for the truck you can see uh, how low the wheels come to the frame uh, I got a scene notched uh, I know I'm going over a couple things that I had talked about before but uh, in case you hadn't seen the other videos um, just figure I'd touch on some of those things but uh, I did have the rear end scene notched and I got the frame as low as you could possibly get it and I'm still trying to decide if I want to um, bring these side skirts down lower to match how low the front end of the truck is, the front bumper. I kind of like it like this, but I'm not sure just yet, so I'm still deciding on that. But all in all, um, the truck has turned out pretty good. Uh, the way the tank turned out, um, when I installed it, being the frame is stretched and where I had to end up putting the tank, uh, the exhaust had to be trimmed to fit around this notch here. And also to get the exhaust to fit in here the right way, I had to end up putting a block in here that you can see right there. There's a nice little piece of block of styrene. And that's the exhaust sets up a little bit higher than it normally would just because of the tank being in the way of where the exhaust needed to go. And on this side, I put just a tiny little block instead of one that went all the way across. I got a, a really small one here. You can see inside the cab there pretty good that uh, pretty much did just the basic detail. I didn't do anything fancy to it. Um, just a little bit of painting that you saw in the previous videos. And then in, just installed the interior in there. But you can see how the engine sits in there. Got it looking nice. You see the fan is right at the radiator so all of that's where it's supposed to be I would like to get a little piece of pipe here to go to the exhaust so that it's more realistic because right here is the manifold the end of the manifold and it needs to go just a little bit further to reach the exhaust if any of you guys are working at building this truck uh, be careful uh, of how the uh, shifter fits in there. You just gotta, when you set it down, gotta make sure you don't hit the shifter when it goes in because the cab, depending on how this glues in, as you can see, this side is flush and this side is off a little bit. That's just how it ended up gluing in. I talked about in a previous video. And so that caused the cab to be turned a little bit. And so I've worked on the cab mounting uh, down here so that I could get the cab to move back and forth a little bit so that I could get it lined up right. And once I get it lined up exactly how I want it to be, then I'm going to put a little bit of filler in here, do a little sanding, and then get that nice and solid. So it has given me a little bit of trouble with the cab. You can see my passenger tire. It's a little crooked on there. And uh, I may try to fix that a little bit. But right now, 
That's about as good as it gets right now. These need a little bit of sanding on them. Get them looking nice. Uh, but that's where these would have mounted on top of this uh, originally. And I ended up flipping this upside down and mounting it on the top of the leaf springs. But then uh, I did have an issue with clearance with the oil pan. And so what I ended up having to do is, if I can get it just a little bit more here, you can see that I had to cut a notch out of the front cross member in order to clear the oil pan. Now, realistically, in a one-to-one, -one, you, you wouldn't have cut this cross member. At the most, you probably would have notched it and uh, had some really nice welds and made it very supportive so that it didn't weaken the front end. But if this had been a one-to-one -one and I trimmed the front end like that, it definitely wouldn't support the weight. That would have broke. Um, so in real life, they would have done like a C-notch around the oil pan or uh, just got a different oil pan. They would have, you would have done something different to uh, get this clearance and not just cut the uh, front cross member here. So at the back here, as you can see, I didn't do any work to it over the time that um, the truck's been sitting on the shelf uh, waiting for the next video. I haven't done anything to the rear end of the truck, which uh, the next video coming up, it will get the trailer hitch put on there. And um, then, like I said, the trailer will get taken care of. So got a lot of little things to get done to it. But um, so I'd say in the next few weeks or so, we will get this truck back on the channel. And that will be the end of the Freightliner cab over until we get us another one and uh, build another one. As we transition to the other side of the table where we're doing our mock-up of the Venomous Prowler, uh, I did buy these little foot treads that uh, go on like steps, stuff like that. I got these at the uh, hardware store. And what I plan on doing is the next year, I'm going to build a diorama on this side of the table. If I pull back a little bit, uh, it's literally the same size as the other side of the table. If you watched uh, the building of the table video um, that I have on the channel. So this side is going to end up being a diorama where I can do all these videos for you. And show you the updates of the vehicles. And it'll look like more realistic because it'll be in its environment. So these right here, a little bit of trim work to get these lines to be a little bit closer. That's going to end up being the road in front of the diorama, which will be a garage. Um, and then a street and possibly at some point end up being a gas station uh, close to it. Because, you know, garage and gas station kind of go together. So, it'll be a while for sure. Slowly uh, starting to work on building a diorama so that all these update videos will be like this right here. Um, look more like it's in its environment. As you see, I had stained the table. And you can see that I've trimmed part of the table. Uh, in gray you can see over there at the top edge of the table and you see the back of the table is gray that's all um just a gloss gray that i painted it the bottom side of the table is going to end up being a primer gray and um, just to keep it so that the wood ends up looking nice uh, for a long, long time, uh, doesn't get like stains on it and stuff like that, that can't be wiped off. Um, but then the other color, I uh, took a uh, primer white and sprayed uh, all the bottom corners and pieces of it. And so, like I said, the inside there will be gray and it'll match the top, except for it'll be primer gray instead of a gloss gray. So this is the new addition to the table. My brother, uh, he's retired Air Force, 
and while he was still active duty he got one for me and i finally got a place i could uh install it and i thought it would look really cool on the table and uh it's actually really pretty secure when i decide to go to move the table then i can hold it by the handle and uh there it is in all its glory with its patina and that is the ejection seat handle for an A-10. Known for inability to keep flying after taking multiple rounds of enemy machine gun fire, land and operate in rugged terrain, destroy groups of enemy fighters with a 30 millimeter cannon and unleash a wide arsenal of attack weapons, the A-10 is described by pilots as a flying tank in the sky. That thing is pretty cool. So using this kit here, the Plymouth Prowler with the trailer, And using the drivetrain of the Dodge Viper GTS Coupe, we're going to make this Prowler what I have dubbed it the Venomous Prowler. All right, moving on to the rear of the chassis that I've mocked up. Now, if you take a look here, starting with this piece here. Let's point with my knife here so you can see better. Starting with this piece right here. And running it all the way back. And connecting here and here. All this is Dodge Viper up to right here so i stopped it right here i cut it there and this back piece right here and this piece is plymouth prowler again because the only way to get the trailer to hook up to it and at the right height is to put the prowler piece the rear end of the chassis back on here and also the um the Dodge Viper chassis was like out to here. It was way too long. So we had to cut that off, put the prowler chassis back on, and so it was like prowler, Dodge Viper, and Prowler. It's pretty interesting how it ended up getting set up there. What we're trying to do is put this monster in here. And I can't just set it down because it has the transmission on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop the body off of it. Pop the interior off. And we'll set this down where it will allow it to set down right now. Now, I don't have the pulleys on it and stuff like that. So this engine's going to have to come back or go up in the car already. So that's already the first problem is that this engine is ginormous compared to that little tiny V6. Now you also see that the transmission doesn't fit in the Prowler under the transmission tunnel or the drive shaft tunnel. Um, depends on what goes under there, but in a Prowler it would have just been a drive shaft tunnel. So that's why it's so skinny and it's not made to accept the um, end of a transmission that's this size. You see that the engine just does not fit in this car whatsoever. But we know that the V10 won't fit no matter what you do. And if I take that out and leave the interior out and just put the engine there and then try to put this back on Get this lined up real quick here. That's where that goes. You see, the engine doesn't sit low enough. So it sticks out of the car. And the hood 
the hood would not be able to close because this engine fits down in here like it's way down in there like that's crazy and you put all the stuff on top of it you know it's going to be the right height of it so this one is as high as the engine gets so you can see that that is not going to fit in the car no matter what I do so there is quite a bit of work that's going to have to go into building this car to get the engine to fit into the Plymouth Prowler and you can see as a scale model that it would be very hard if not impossible to put that V10 into this car so you can see going from a V6 which is just three cylinders wide or long, three cylinders long to go into a V10 that's five cylinders long it's a huge huge endeavor and it's probably why no one's ever attempted it it's just too much engine and nowadays people got V8s making well over a thousand horsepower so I mean it's kind of more for nostalgia than anything to get this engine into the prowler so I know it's possible uh, in the scale model world just a matter of modifying the frame and the mm -hmm. chassis and everything to get it to fit but in the real world I don't know if it would be possible to get this engine to fit in here and to work properly um, with the limited amount of room even if you could get it to fit it would probably overheat just because you don't have enough airflow to get to the engine so this is going to be a really involved build trying to get this engine to fit in here and it's really all i'm trying to do is i got the rear end done and i just got to move it up a little bit and i got to figure out how the heck i'm going to get this engine to fit into this thing so that is going to be a fun deal to do and try to see how that'll work so we will talk to you guys later thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video